Good morning, youth class. Uh, we pray that your uh, Christmas was good yesterday. Um, it's always wonderful to remember our Lord's birth. Uh, he, if he wasn't born, then he wouldn't have been able to die. So without Christmas, we don't have Easter. And uh, I've heard our pastor say and others say that sin is the reason for the season. Yes, sin is the reason for the season. Jesus came to live a life, to be the ultimate sacrifice for us. Let's have a word of prayer before we get into the lesson. Um, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this opportunity for another Sunday school, this Sunday, the, the December 26th. Lord, we just pray that as we get into your word that you would Give us understanding of the passage by your Holy Spirit. We thank you for all your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. First, I want to apologize to you. Uh, I don't have today's lesson in the Sunday School book, but I do have the fall lesson and the last lesson of chapter or lesson 13 uh, of uh, faith. It's called Faith in Tough Times. And uh, it's a month old. But it looks like to me it's a really good lesson. The fall 21, 2021 lesson. So it's faith in tough times. It comes from Genesis 1, uh, 22, verse 1 through 19, and Hebrews 11, verse 17 through 19. It also has a scripture memory verse that says, Consider it pure joy my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. In the King James, uh, which most of you have that, um, in James chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, uh, 2 and 3, it says, Brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. We know, I know, in this life, it's very easily easy to get impatient with things that happen. Uh, just be impatient. I mean, we, I get in a hurry sometimes, uh, whether it's getting ready to come to church, or go to work, driving, uh, get in a hurry, uh, we want things instant now. We're in a now society, you know, microwave today. Uh, that's something that people in the past didn't have to deal with that. You had to make preparations. Um, it's kind of nice to take a box lunch to school because you didn't have to cook it. You just grab it and eat it. So, yeah, you know, we live in an instant society. We, we have this instant gratification thing, living in the moment. <clears throat> but trials bring patience because trials uh, in life uh, usually in it, usually there's a delay, a delay in gratification, a delay in reward. And um, you know, you take a top college student; they went already went through twelve years of school, and then they go to at least another four years to be a teacher or whatever. Uh, there's trials. That is a long trial. That's 16 years of schooling just to be a teacher. If you're a doctor, you're looking at uh, 24, almost 24 years of schooling. It's nuts. So, I mean, that's a big chunk of your life. And, and, and it could be considered like a trial. Um, if I, I wouldn't want a doctor um, that didn't go through the schooling because maybe they, especially like a surgeon, you know, well, I want them to have the skills. I want them to have the knowledge. I want them to be tested. Well, God, it isn't like God doesn't know uh, what's in us, but he allows tests and trials in our life to bring out for our benefit so others can see Christ in us. You know, it's, it's a way of letting our light shine that men will see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. 
And we have a great example with Abraham in Genesis 22. Um, it says, and this is going, I'm going to read verses 1 through 19. Um, Abraham, Father Abraham, was promised a son in his old age. He expected, he, God said, you know, he, he uh, blessed him so much and everything and, and that he was going to make him a, a, a father of many nations. And Abraham's like, how, how can it be? I don't have a son. Is it going to be one of my servants that has a child or whatever? And God said, no, you're going to have a son. Uh, well, there was a delay in timing of that happening. And, and um, his wife, Sarah, uh, um, I think of Sarah at the time, before he got his name changed, he was Abram, not Abraham. But anyway, um, she said, I, I have a maid, Hagar. Maybe God will give you children with her. She's younger. She can have children. So they, they did that. This is uh, 12 years before God it blessed them with Isaac. And she became pregnant, and they had uh, uh, Ishmael. His name, they called his name Ishmael. And he ended up being a hunter, and, and, and you know, the Arab, a lot of the Arab people came through Ishmael. Um, but that wasn't God's promise that his, he said, in Isaac would his seed be called. And here we are in chapter 22. After God had blessed him with a son, he was 100 years old. Uh, Sarah was 90 uh, years old, over 90. So, uh, uh, a year before that, angel, God, Christ appeared to him, uh, pre-incarnate, and said, uh, by this time next year, you're going to have a son. And, and Sarah laughed. Of course, Abraham laughed in the prior chapter. Because, um, I mean, it's natural. I mean, you, when you're 100, almost a 100-year-old man, you're going to have a baby. <laughs> like, you know, wow, you know. But... God is God, and he could take death and make life happen out of it, out of a dead situation. And that's what he did for Abraham, because he is God. He, don't, he, he made everything out of nothing, so it's, nothing is too hard for him. He could give you the womb, a uh, 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 150-year-old person, uh, let him live that long, and give him a womb of a child, or, or as a young adult. But verse uh, 1 of chapter 22 Genesis, it says, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Well, he did have another son, Isaac, but this is the promised son, the promised seed son. That's what, so, so yeah, he had two sons, but this is the promised son. That's what he's saying. That's the only one God recognizes here is the miracle child that God gave him. Verse 3 says, And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass. And you picture, uh, you know, they were, Isaac was a little bit older then, so he's over 100 years old, but he's able to do all this stuff. Amazing. So he put a saddle on it. That's what they rode. They rode, they didn't ride in cars, so he had to put a saddle on his donkey and took two of his young men with him, verse 3, and Isaac, <clears throat> his son, so there's four people, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, or uh, cut down tree or whatever, it, to get the wood, and rose up and went into the place which God had told him. And on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes. So this is a three days journey getting there, camping out and getting. So three days they're out there. He lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. So Abraham already knew what God, God was going to, uh, have him sacrifice his son, but he's saying, we're going to come back. That's faith. He's telling him, we'll, we'll come again to you. And Abraham took the wood 
in the burnt offering of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. Isaac had to carry it. <clears throat> and he took the fire in his hand and the knife. And they both, so he would have a, a, you know, you picture them having like a torch or whatever. That's He had the fire in his hand and a knife and they went, both of them, together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham, his father, and said, My father, and he said, Here I am, son, uh, here am I, son, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So prophetic. So they went, <clears throat> both of them, together. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, just like an animal, tied his hand. And Isaac let him do it. By now, he's figuring, okay, uh, all right. But he's obeying his father. He's not fighting him. It's like he's not, he, you know, he asked a question, but then he went along with it. And, and this is verse 6, or verse 9, excuse me. And laid him on the altar upon the wood. So Isaac's laying on the wood, bound his hand, bound the feet. And Abraham stretched forth his hand with the knife, and took the knife to slay his son. That's verse 10. Verse 11 says, And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, from me. I believe this is a, another example of the pre-incarnate Christ because he's saying, from me. And it says, And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by, the, by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering uh, instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place, Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. Um, Jehovah Jireh also means provider. God is my God, a uh, God, or my provider, or Yahweh, my provider. Verse 15 uh, says, And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time, and, see, and said, By myself I have sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thee. Let's see. Blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of, of the heaven. And as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned unto the young men, and they rose up and went together to Beersheba, and Abraham dwelt in Beersheba. So we see here a wonderful story so pregnant with meaning god the god of salvation uh, has left us several types in the old testament of his redemption of mankind and he's using abraham as an example of what he is about to do the promise when adam and eve sinned in the garden was given to them when he talked about the serpent that it would bruise his heel, but he would bruise his head. That was the first messianic promise that Christ would come and be born into as a man and to die in the place of us. They look forward to the cross in the Old Testament. We look back to the cross. 
They knew there was something better. That's why they had these sacrifices. That's why they had all these animals that they killed because it was representative. It was on credit. It was in the place of uh, Christ. It was because it was a type of Christ. Um, in Hebrews, it talks about that it's not possible the blood of bulls and calves could take away sin. And so we're going to turn to Hebrews chapter 11 and where it talks about Abraham and his faith. <clears throat> in Hebrews chapter 11, and it says, uh, we're looking at verse 17 through 19. It says this. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son, of whom, and or you could say another way, one and only son, the only the, the son of the promise, of whom it is it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And verse 19 says, Or counting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. So Abraham, he was going to kill Isaac. He was determined he was going to do it because he knew that his seed would be called in Isaac. God was going to raise him from the dead. He knew that God somehow God was going to fix this. And, you know, he knew the voice of God. That's another thing. Um, a lot of people t today claim they know the voice of God, but uh, they they use uh, God told me this, God told me that to do all kind of rash things that that's not found in Scripture. Well, you think, well, you know, he told Abraham, I, you know, no, look, uh, the foundation has already been laid. The foundation has been laid. The apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone. Um, I believe he guides his people, but he guides us through his word. And that's why he said, in all your ways, acknowledge him in Proverbs 3 and 5, 6, and he will direct thy paths. Uh, we're supposed to trust in the Lord with all our heart, lean not to our own understanding, pray about things and get in God's word and make sure that, that it doesn't contradict God's word. And sometimes we have to wait, wait on the Lord until he provides the direction. You know, prayer that I pray is, uh, God, open the doors you want me to walk in and close the ones you don't have me to walk in. You, you don't want me to walk in. And and uh, it it's worked very well for me because, you know, I'm not my own. I'm a servant of the Most High. I belong to Him. And I'm here for the purpose that He left me here. When He saved me, He didn't just kill me, but He left me here to be a, a, a to glorify Christ on earth and to be a witness for him and to see others come into the kingdom through my testimony. Um, so, you know, I thank God that he's uh, allowed me to see what the gospel is, that he's enlightened my eyes, that he, that he uh, caused me to be born again. Because, you know, when he did that, he gave me a desire for his word. And... Uh, he's opened the understanding of his word to me. And every Christian has uh, is born again. If you're a Christian, you have been born again. True Christians have been born again. And true Christians, uh, uh, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word of God that they may grow thereby. There's going to be signs of life as a Christian. And the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. And he is the one who's going to get you out of the ground one day. We uh, have hope, just like Abraham had hope. You know, Abraham was promised seed throughout the generations. But the biggest thing was the fact that uh, Christ would be born through one of the one of the, the promised seed was going to be Jesus Christ. Our Lord from heaven is going to come through Abraham. Um, so. Uh, There's another place talking about he looked for a city. Let's go. Oh, it's in uh, Hebrews. His builder and maker was God. Yeah. 
Um, you know, so Abraham is a great example. Uh, 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 let's see. These all died in faith. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 16 of chapter 11 of Hebrews. It says, by, the, by now they desired a better country and heavenly uh, and heavenly whereof God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. Uh, Jesus told the disciples, um, if I go away, I will come again to receive you into myself, that where I am there you may be also. So we uh, have earthly blessings, but we also have heavenly blessings because he said lay not yourselves treasure on earth where moth and dust doth corrupt and thieves break through and steal but lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven where the, there's none of that thing can happen uh because you know and he also told us not to fear man who could take our body but could not take our soul we have a heavenly home this is not our home so uh we have something to look forward to and you know, he left us here to be a witness and to occupy till he comes. Um, and uh, he said he would direct our paths if we acknowledge him. Uh, this is talking about faith in tough times. Just know that whatever God has promised in his word, he will accomplish. Um, so when difficulty comes, whether it's like what happened with Job, he had God. As long as you have God, you have it all. It doesn't matter. He said, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord. He's sovereign. He's God. And even though he uses the devil, he uses everything to accomplish his purpose and his will because he is God. And that's why we can have confidence in our God that he loves us and he will keep us and he will fulfill his promise within us. Um, as young people, you know, you face uh, tribulations, you'll face trials, you'll face uh, issues. It says here in James, uh, which is the memory verse, it says, Consider it pure joy, my, uh, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials in many kinds. You know, I know um, a lot of you face bullying at different times. You faced uh, maybe some hard teachers. You faced some uh, uh, severed friendships, uh, relationships that went sour. But, you know, God works all these things out for his glory, for his purpose in our lives, and for our good. All things work together for good to those who love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Just know that if you are called, if you are saved, if you belong to him, you have a great promise. And uh, uh, he who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. Uh, as a child of God, uh, you get to Hebrews 12, it talks about not, you know, he, he doesn't allow his children to experience um, or treat his children the same way he treats those who are not his children. So it may look like it's harder on you as a Christian, but... It's because he, you belong to him. That's the difference. Uh, you know, my parents couldn't whip my buddies for the same stuff. We could be in the same trouble. But you know what? I'm the one that gets a whipping because I'm, I belong to them. And that's the same way with God. Those who don't belong with it, it's going to look like they're getting by with everything. You imagine Judas all that time stealing out of the money pot and everything. And, you know, Jesus said he was a devil. It looked like he was getting by, but he wasn't. And, and it's, it's the same thing. I mean, you know, it's not a good thing if, if it looks like you're getting by with stuff in this life because this life is short and it's temporary. It's like a vapor of smoke. So that could be a sign that you're not even saved. You, you may have went through the motions and all that stuff, but that may that, that's a sign that you don't even know Jesus. You haven't 
you know, you're not a backslider. You're never was in this faith. Okay. Um, so, but anyway, yes, there's going to be tough times. There's going to be times that our faith is tested, but just know when you come out on the other side, you'll be as gold tried in a fire. God bless you. We love you, Pink Creek.